Warlock 2 The Exiled isn't just civilization with dragons. That was my first thought though, after loading up the game for the first time. As a 4x strategy game featuring a hex-based grid, city building, and diplomacy with various AI factions, it's easy to make the comparison. However, after spending far more time than I meant to with the game, I can safely say that Warlock 2 earns its place in a cluttered genre. Upon loading up a new game, there are the usual configurable options, such as difficulty, world size, and victory conditions. More interestingly, there's also the choice between the Exiled mode and Sandbox mode. Sandbox mode is self-explanatory, allowing players to enter the world and play the game as they see fit, be it progressing as a diplomat, or battling to victory as a conquering warlord. The Exiled is Warlock 2's equivalent to a story mode, offering up a series of quests and events to work through. Often, I find that a scripted story can detract from the fun of playing a 4x title, but Warlock 2 handles it very well. Some of the events include defending the capital from a pair of two-headed dragons, to a wizard bombarding you with powerful, world-changing spells every few turns. These events can be handled in several different ways, meaning that you aren't pushed into one specific playstyle. Take the wizard throwing spells at me. If I were playing as a full-on warlord, I could have taken siege to all of his cities and ground him down that way. Instead, the wizard offered up a challenge for me to cast a spell that he'd never seen before. This began a chain of events that included rescuing a witch from monsters and taking down a huge sea serpent. The biggest thing that differentiates Warlock 2 from others in its genre is the magic system. At first I thought the spellcasting was a bit of a gimmick, allowing the players to occasionally chime in by throwing a fireball at a pack of wolves or casting a healing spell on a low health group of scouts. It quickly became clear that this was not the case though, and that proper magic use is an integral part of the game. There is a huge number of spells that can be learned across three different schools. Again, in keeping with Warlock 2's focus on player choice, they cover a wide range of utilities, not just damaging and healing. Some of my favourite of these spells included turning enemy territory into a desolate wasteland, or raising impassable mountains in order to force enemies into a choke point. Another handy ability let me grant flying to certain units under my control, allowing them to navigate across oceans and otherwise impassable regions. This was particularly powerful when utilised with a highly leveled hero unit. These hero units are another very important part of Warlock 2. Either hired or earned from certain quests, heroes can range from useful healers to highly armoured warriors. In keeping with the high fantasy theme, rather than being just a nice boost to my army, it was often the case that I would build my army around my hero. All units can level up too, with heroes unlocking certain abilities when they do so. In one campaign, I had a highly leveled supreme vampire hero, who could paralyse enemies with a ranged attack, and use different types of damaging magic depending on a foe's weakness. Combined with a powerful lifesteal, and immunity from two types of magic, he was almost unkillable. In some respects, I found them almost too powerful, especially after getting lucky by finding a certain type along with the perfect artefacts to equip them with. At certain points I found it possible to wipe out an entire enemy faction with just one hero, which rendered my army of normal units obsolete. Mobility wasn't even an issue. After researching a spell that allowed me to teleport my hero onto any hex tile, even in a different dimension. Warlock 2 places your starting city in one of around 10 or so different dimensions, which are separated by a series of portals. Any of your units can step through the portals to enter the next dimension, although they are often guarded by a powerful creature. The dimensions themselves are essentially just new continents, each with their own theme. For example, some take the form of a tropical paradise, while others are made up of poisoned lands taken over by the undead. Warlock 2 also has a multiplayer mode. This functions about the same as the single player, except there's real players in the mix. While it's always fun to play with a friend, I found that multiplayer progressed a little slowly for my liking. When you factor in waiting for your opponent to make their move, along with all the neutral and AI turns also having to be processed. This works in Civilization, a game in which grand strategy is of huge importance, but Warlock 2 seems more geared towards responding to events as they happen. Of course, planning is important, but it's far quicker and easier to react to situations when they arise than it is in Civilization, where a poor choice on turn 50 could bite you 200 turns later. I feel the quicker nature of single player is more suited to this style of gameplay, though that's not to say the multiplayer is badly done. Warlock 2 The Exiled surprised me by how much it manages to shake up the usual 4x formula. 
the deep and rewarding spell system is a fun alternative to researching passive technologies, while the powerful hero units are reminiscent of real-time strategy titles like Warcraft and Majesty. For just £24.99, there's a huge amount of content in Warlock 2. If you're a Civilization vet, or just a fan of strategy games in general, this is something a bit different that's well worth picking up.